welcome back in the previous section we looked at the basics of components we focused on the jsx part and we talked about parent component child component we talked about how you can create individual modules for each of the components and we talked about how you can create a number of child components in your app component to understand react further we need to understand a lot more about components you need to understand how you can write logic around components how you can take decisions based on actions how you can style your components and also talk about a couple of important things called states and properties and to help us understand this what we do is we would develop a, something called a counter we will develop a simple counter this would be a pure front end counter where when you press any of these buttons the specific increment or decrement will happen and we have a reset button at the bottom to reset the entire state we will use this example as a means to understand the other important things about components logic styling state and props i hope you are having an interesting time in the course i'll see you in the next step where we would start with the counter component welcome back welcome to this step where we would start developing our counter component what we'll do is we'll take a shortcut and we'll reuse the same application to develop the counter to enable us to retain this piece of code what i'll do is actually i'll actually create a new component i'll call this class learning components extends component and i'll move the random method entire thing or actually i'll copy the entire method in here so what this enable us enables us to do is whenever we want to go back to the learning components all that we need to do is do this learning components and slash learning components and we'll retain the existing functionality that we had um the only thing i need to change is change the class name here to learning components so now if i go back to the browser it remains exactly the same isn't that cool so now we can go back to learning components whenever we would want to so what i'll do for now is i'll remove this out what we want to focus on is to start creating our counters right so let's start creating our counter component so we can create a class component or we can create a function component what we have learned earlier is we need to create components in their own classes actually in their own modules so let's go ahead and start creating a new folder for all the stuff that we would be creating for counter so inside components i'm creating a new folder called counter so inside components we have a new folder called counter and in here i'll create a new file i'll call this counter.jsx the name of the component or the name of the file or the name of the module does not need to match the name of the classes which are present in here in java typically the name should really match however in javascript the name of the module or the name of the file containing the module does not need to match the default exported class so you can actually name this file as anything but as a convention we kind of use the component which is exported out of that specific module the name of that component as the name of the module now having that that i'll just copy the 
functional component that we created third component dot jsx let's copy it into counter import react from react function counter and i'll say class name is equal to counter and this is a counter and make sure that you are replacing this as well so what we have done now is we quickly created a counter component we exported it out you don't need to use the semicolon in app.js what we would want to do is we would want to import the counter so i'll say import counter from the dot slash components slash counter slash counter and over here let's include the counter in so in the app now we are including the counter component in now you can see counter is getting rent dead so in this quick step what we wanted to do is the basic setup for the counter component in the next step let's Let's talk more about it. Until the next step, bye bye. Welcome back. In the previous step, we started with creating the counter component. This is the view we have right now. In this step, let's go ahead and add a button and show a counter. Let's see how to do that. The way you can add a button is very simple, right? It's usual. So all that you need to do is say button. And let's say I just say I hard code slash plus one to it right now. Let's see how it appears. So button plus one and slash button. So it's plus one. One of the important things to understand with JSX is you cannot use caps. So if you, I use caps div, what would happen? It says div is not defined. All HTML elements should be small. So whether it's div, button, any form elements, all of them should be small case. Only the custom components that we create can use the initial cap letter. Now, that warning aside, let's focus on actually adding a counter as well. So I'll just define a span here just to differentiate it from the button so that we can style it differently a little later and I'll say zero what we would want to do is when this button is clicked we would want to increment the value of this one of the things that I don't really like about it right now is I don't like the styling of it now, I would want to add a little bit of styling CSS to this specific counter how can I do that the way I can do that is by creating a CSS file for that specific counter so i'll say right click new file counter dot css so counter dot css and i can add styles in here for now what i'll do is i'll import it in so the way i can import a css file this is not a javascript file this is a css file so i just need to say import slash dot slash counter dot css to check whether the css is working let's take the button and add a little bit of css to the button so let's just say font size 100 px so it's very clear oops you can see it's font size 100 px so the css is working all that we had to do was create a new file called counter.css and include that inside particular module let's now make the button appear a little better i'll add a background color let's make it green let's keep it simple um I'll make the font size as 16 pixels. I'll add a padding. Let's make it 15 pixels, 30 pixels. Let's have a font color of white. And let's have a, a larger button. Let's specify the width as 100 pixels. I'm not really an expert on CSS. I'm trying to just get this thing a little better looking. 
So now I have plus one uh, appearing a little better. So the styles that we are adding are working fine. So app.js, the button. Now let's actually add a class to this called count. One of the things about JSX is if you want to add a class, the right attribute to use is class name. While class might work in the recent versions of React, always the suggested thing to use is class name. And that's the reason why you would see that in all the JSX which we wrote until now, we would be using class name. So to add a class onto anything, all that you need to do is do class name is equal to count. And now to add CSS to the count, all that we need to do is say dot count and specify whatever you'd want in here. Just to check if it's working, let's say font size 50px. Let's see what would happen. Cool. Let's add a little bit of padding to it as well. Cool. So now I have a button and I have a count which is displayed along it. What should we do next? What we need to do next is whenever this plus one button is clicked, we would want to increment the value of the count. How do we do that? That's where an important concept called state comes into picture. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In the earlier step, we enhanced our counter to have a better look. It's not really perfect yet, but it's looking better than what it was earlier. What we want to do is when you click plus one, we would want to increment the value of this. And I said there is something called state involved. Before we get to state, we need to be able to handle the click event. So when this button is clicked, I would want to be able to handle that. How do I do that? Let's see how to do that in this specific step. Typically, in usual JavaScript based on the DOM, the way you do that is by adding an onClick event and adding a JavaScript method call. So you'd say onClick is equal to some JS method call. However, in the case of JSX, the way we need to do it is a little different. One of the important things is in J6 all the attributes so on click is an attribute on the button all the attributes use camel case so on click would use o n C as caps. So on click would be on C caps click. And you need to define in here within curly braces. what function to call. So let's define a function. function in here, I'll call this function increment and what I'll do is console.log increment. Cool. Now over here on click I would 
want to call increment method this is javascript right so this is basically a javascript method call and that's why we are putting it between curly braces in jsx anything javascript you would put it within curly braces now, now let's see what would happen let's do right click inspect and look at console one of the things that i am observing right now is that there is increment already printed in the console i have not clicked the button yet but increment is already printed there are a couple of warnings logo is not defined but never used learning components is defined but never used the errors are because i am importing logo and also we have defined a class called learning components in here which is never used at all so that's okay what you have focused on is really the increment stuff right increment is getting called when the page is getting loaded and not when plus 1 is clicked why is it happening in that way one of the important things about jsx is when you define the method you just pass a reference to the method you don't really need to invoke the method you don't you just say okay this is the function to call this is the reference and what would happen is that function would be called when the click event happens so now i remove the function call and i'm just passing a function name to it let's see what would happen now you'd see that when the page refreshes there is no increment printed in the con so and when i say plus 1 cool now you can see that more and more increments are being printed now now we are able to handle the increment click event so on the click event we are able to do a increment now the important question is what should we increment right so this zero should be incremented to 1 and 2 3 4 and 5 and to be able to do that we need to have something here representing 
state of this specific component. Once we have a state for this specific component on the click of the event we can do an increment how do we specify state Let's look at that in the next step. Until then, bye bye. Welcome 